All right, so Vince dropped off a couple ducks and uh, one of them just shit on the cow with a C10. So we're gonna have duck for dinner because uh, I'm not putting up with it. And I hear duck tastes really good. If you wanna see crap on the C10 roof, you're gonna have to come out on September 27th. We're having our one and only open house kind of lap day with the straight pipes and Speed Academy at Toronto Motorsports Park in Cayuga. So it's a Sunday, September 27th, and that'll be the only chance you guys get this year to meet up, say hello, um, and check out the project. So C10 will be there, um, not running, but uh, we got a nice new trailer, so we're happy to tow stuff there. Um, but what will be running, hopefully, is the Audi. Um, the Audi's plans got botched for 2020, um, so we kind of put it off to the background. We did a pile of work on it, actually. But uh, you get to see that, and you get to see us in person. We'll have swag for sale, some hats, some t-shirts, and uh, keychains. So hopefully we'll see you in Cuga on the 27th. I gotta go wipe up some crap and look at some recipes online. Here we go. Here she is, 1964 C10. We're gonna put the Germax and the two-wheel drive Allison in there, making it a legitimate tow truck. <laughs> that looks pretty cool. From here, it starts to suck because it's like, oh, that's leaking and that's broken and that doesn't fit. <laughs> because it's not super structurally sound, I'm gonna make my own cab. But that looks really, really nice. These actually fit really nicely. I'll grab some steel and we'll bend up some floor patches for the front, finish up the firewall, and then hopefully bolt that down, and that is the end of it. I've been waiting for this for seven months. All right, so we're back on our C10 cab. We've got the Germax running, so we gotta get ready to throw this cab on it, and it needs a little bit of work. It's got some holes in there, it's got some holes back there, and um, that's no good. I don't think it's ever been done, which is great because even if it's this bad or it's just a little bit punky, it still needs to be fixed. So we will cut that out thanks to Summit. Um, we got some inner rockers and some outer rockers and we should be able to weld this up without too, too many issues. So here we go. <laughs> Inside a barn, but when you start overlapping steel, you start seeing all this rust on the inside, and this never even made it to a road. But we have a factory lip here that we can save, so I think the best plan of action is to cut the back rocker into it and keep because this is all still together ish. Maybe we should cut the rocker out, do the outside rocker first, and then tuck the inside rocker in. Either or, either you need to keep your outside rocker in for reference, for your gaps, and make sure your door still closes, or keep the inside in. What should I do? I think because he did the most work to the outside rocker, we will do the outside rocker first. Sounds like a plan. Should we take this door off? All right, so. First things I noticed is that bolts are missing on the hinges, so there's probably one bolt. <laughs> so, might as well take the front clip off. Probably better that we get this up off the floor a little bit so that I don't have to bend over the entire day. So, yeah, it's never as quick and easy as you think. Here we go. <laughs>
got the insulation out and the cab is so much worse than I thought it was going to be which is extremely disappointing because I don't want to spend too much time on it but I think right here is a good spot for like a fuse bar the passenger side is actually worse on this side here so I don't know exactly what I'm going to do yet I might replace this piece yet only because I got clearance issues here anyway so I could probably cut the firewall back a little bit to where there's good steel and just put a new piece of tin there the floor and that's not terrible most of that gets covered by the piece that we replaced it's kind of disappointing because you feel like oh we're just going to do this and then we can carry on to put it in perspective this is still a hundred times better than the gto was so i should just quit my whining and just get to work replace what i've got and then figure it out as we go so here we go because it's not super structurally sound we're gonna put some braces we'll just go across from door to door um or actually maybe to something like this so that none of this moves when we start cutting stuff out and then as soon as that's done um we're just gonna cut out all the crap Start over. I'm gonna make my own cab. Here we go. Okay, so we got this in there. Basically, uh, we've got our shape that follows the floor here. We got a little corner that follows the indent in here. So we're just gonna take some roofing screws and self-tap that in place so it doesn't move. What we'll likely do is cut just a bit more off so that the corner is much easier. Then what we'll do is we'll cut with the zip disc, follow the contour of the rocker, and then that will give us just enough to move it in and uh, that should be the right placement. We can tilt it a bit one way or another to uh, come up against the rocker as it does come down, but that's where we're gonna start. So, here we go. the 260 for most stuff but this little 140 mp is just absolutely perfect for body work so i'm just gonna hold these up against what we don't want to do is stitch we'll just butt weld every three four inches and then work our way back so that it doesn't get hot and warp uh, we got holes here for the frames you're supposed to weld that to the frame but we'll be moving our frames so if i can use those i i will i probably won't do the rockers on the outside until we have it back on the frame that way we can make our own mounts and supports where it works around the exhaust and where we need it to be we'll probably get rid of this we'll try and use this back one but we'll see and then when that's all done then we can weld these up we'll paint the inside with some uh, good paint so that it doesn't rust but at the end of the day a lot of people get really upset about <laughs> hey it's hey, look, look at the truck <laughs>
that's not bad about an hour per side um, can't even really see the weld just a hair there but that's all right if you rub your hand on it you can't feel it <laughs> so uh, I got to do a touch more grinding on the other side but that looks really really nice these actually fit really nicely these ones from uh, Summit so I'll grab some steel and we'll bend up some floor patches for the front I got the side pieces here what I meant to order was the floor like this piece and that piece and I ended up with the pieces on the side so probably my doing ordering it wrong but anyway it is supper time so I'm gonna go eat there we go all right back on the c10 um it's a lot easier if you just cut out what you don't need there was a couple patches put here already i've got the other side to kind of look at um as to what i need now unfortunately most companies that i checked were sold out of this pan so i, I have to make it tall enough here um, and this this from here over saw enough there's just this little corner here the only panel that was available went from here to here and then stopped halfway through here and so 80 bucks American which is 160 to the door I can make that a lot cheaper and quicker so I think we start with the most difficult spot which is the indent I can bend that up because it just travels through then lay the piece in, bend this corner, bend this a little bit down, and then bend up, and then put the lip on it, and then stretch it and shrink it. It's really easy. 26 by 11. Got it. <laughs> I've got my my nice seam that carries on from there and goes through to there now I can butt it up to here and figure out my angle so I'm one inch right here so if I make a mark an inch back and then cut on an angle like this I can bring this tight up against then I can fold my lip and then I can just cut the seam back here and weld that wherever it is so here we go engage with steps this is hard gotta curl this up a bit stretch it Okay, that actually looks really good. I had to bang the curve in there a little bit. Got it fairly straight. It dips down just a little bit, um, like it curls around in the floor. It's hard to see. But um, now I've got my edge that I'm gonna weld to. I can cut this section out so I can get at this nice and we'll weld that in. Then we'll just take a zip cut, weld along the back and replace as much of the floor as, as we can. So, there you go.
All right, so floor looks fantastic. We got this little piece welded in. We got our angle on the front. We got the driver's floor all done, rockers. We got these side panels welded in. So the floor and the inner rockers are now attached to the side here and to this post. Uh, now we just gotta fix this firewall. And I'm thinking that the best way to do that is just cut the whole thing off and start over with another sheet of steel. Isn't it sad that they rust even on the shelf? That's how we buy our new steel. It's a lot easier if you just start cutting and getting rid of what's broken. So I think I'm going to actually turn it back a hair because this is rotten here and there was a little gap here. Um, we'll go right back to here and I'll weld the seam right there. So here we go. The floor is solid enough, but I think I'm going to support it on the dash there. The dash is part of this. And I think I'm just gonna cut this right back until it meets here. And then just do the whole firewall right on here and do a seam seal. I don't know if this is a rain gutter. So if the water comes down here with this lip, it runs down the side and then ends up down here, which is probably why this is all rotten. We won't be driving this too many times in the rain. Not like you have to. Uh, if we get caught in the rain, we get caught in the rain. But otherwise, I'll make a little drip rail right at the very top. Oh, look. Half a snake. And then we'll worry about that then. I'm going to cut these back and then make a little spacer for where the fender bolts to. And I'll cut this back and that's going to change up into that Hydro Boost. See it? Right there. But actually, the brake lever or the push rod that connects to here is actually going to go over right here and come out right here so we'll make a new bracket for that but we'll um what we'll do is put the firewall up against and then we'll self tap it in and then we'll weld those holes in afterwards i'll just put a straight edge on it keep cutting this back until it meets the firewall and then probably end up getting rid of this all together maybe replacing it with a wheelbarrow or something i don't know yet i haven't got that far here we go Okay, so because these are spot welded together here, this bottom panel on the firewall, I have to uh, put a little weld on there and put the two together. But that looks pretty, pretty slick. And then uh, it'll be nice and smooth just to put a bunch of spot welds for the smooth firewall. So we'll drill all the spot welds out on this thing, cut this thing back. We're just rocking. Here we go. piece of steel around the hardware store but I think that's a pretty good fit and because it was just a summer student that put this together it's practically ready to go ah, so beautiful Okay, so before we put the wheelbarrow in, I'm going to bend up the steel here. The old hump, this would have been done by the previous guy. This is done from me because the engine is actually off center in our truck, which is why I had to cut the transmission tunnel more on this side. It's nice because I can put the wheelbarrow kind of off center as well. So it looks centered behind the engine 
Now, my brake is only four feet wide, and this is six feet wide, so I could make a slit in the middle and fold one over just to do the bend down here and then the lip going down, but I think I'm just going to cut it right down the middle, and then I can weld this seam back again. I, I, it's going to look like ass if I do it in one whole piece, so um, rather than fight it for an extra amount of time and then end up cutting it anyway, I'm just going to cut it right from the start. So. Uh, but this turned out really nice um, all the way along that's welded up and it's probably stronger now it's welded all the way along rather than just spot welded occasionally in between so i'm gonna grind this little spot here yet and one little weld here and then we're off to the races here we go And there she is, two pieces of steel tacked onto the firewall in place up against the floor. Uh, I can vice grip the gap nice and tight and just weld that. But that looks pretty good actually, I'm pretty happy with that. We'll trace around the outside here, everything that can get cut off and then it'll look a whole lot better. Uh, the guy in town that used to do my bead rolling, he did the uh, crew cab Studebaker. He's not there anymore, he retired. So, I might have to look up somebody else to see if I can get a couple beads rolled into the floor. But before we cut anything, and before we disconnect that thing for the steering, I'm gonna pop these, uh, I'm gonna drill those rivets out and weld that back in place, at least for the steering, because the brake will be different. Before we do that, or trim this, or bead roll it. I'm going to bed because it's one in the morning. So, um, before I do anything stupid, this is a good place to leave it for tonight. See you in the morning. Okay, so we're gonna go see Harrington Built. Um, never met the guy, just seen his work on Instagram. Does really nice work, all metal fab. It turns out he's only 11 minutes from me, so he's almost as close as my old guy. So, just see if we can put a couple beads in here, stiffen this up, and then I can uh, start mounting the steering and start fabbing up all the other stuff. Hopefully weld this in, and then uh, have a nice solid cab again. I said before that um, I wasn't going to do too much to this cab, but if I had a nice clean cab, I'd still have to redo all the mounts underneath, and I'd probably do the same work to the firewall. But now that I've done this, this cab is good to go. Um, I might look for some front fenders yet. I know where there's a good batch. The guy won't let them go. The truck hasn't moved in 20 years, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, here we go. All right, um, I'm here with Jeff with, uh, from Harrington Built. I didn't even know you're like 10 minutes away from me. Yeah. Yeah, what do you do? Uh, if you can dream it, we can build it. Oh yeah? A little bit of everything. General fabricating, metal shaping. Right on. You can bang out some rusty tin for me. Some rusty tin, <laughs> yeah. Alright, Holt is in back on again. And that looks really good. Um, keep in mind that on the C10, the hump was in the center. On this truck, it's off to the passenger side. I do know that I need to cut it up to there at least. I'll take the old spot, um, the old hump, and I banged into it where the intake was. So I know that I have to go at least that high. I think we can drop the hump down quite a bit. And then I'm going to take them back to uh, Harrington Build and then continue a bead nicely all the way along on the top just for looks. Just to give it something and a little bit more rigidity. I'm going to have to weld a little piece in between down here so then we'll, we'll run a bead through a wider piece and then cut that in. And then it'll be really nice and strong. So for now I'm going to bolt it together on the seam, trim the seam, trim the outside. Then I'll put the cab back on the frame. I'll get the mounts figured out. And then we'll take the, the cab off one more time, finish up the firewall, and then hopefully bolt that down, and that is the end of it. That's super exciting. You start putting the Intellitronics dash in there, start running the wiring. Even like being able to 
wired up and having like a key that would start that thing. Oh, this is really exciting because this was a big chunk of work that I knew had to be done. And just like that, starting to look so much better without one little gap right there. I'll have to fix that. But it looks so much better without all that rot in there. So cut it out, weld it in. Here we go. Okay, so I held that thing up to here and that's roughly where the transmission bell housing is going to be and that's roughly where my intake is going to sit. So I'm going to start by cutting just the bell housing out. I'm going to pick up the cab, put it back on the frame uh, so we'll get it on the hoist and then we'll just drop it down and as I'm going down we'll keep cutting a bit more and more until it fits as close to the engine as possible. Uh, we got the rockers on. Um, I've riveted just a few spots um, down below, down here to rivet the inners to the outers. That'll give this lots of strength. Should be no issues with warping and twisting and stuff. Once we have it sitting where I want it to, then we can figure out exactly where the cab mounts are going to go, working around the exhaust. And I did kind of mess up with the exhaust because we've bolted this on. Um, it needs to be about an inch lower, and that's because when we welded the collector, I angle it up a hair instead of down. So I did things out of order, but we can fix that by redoing the flange on here. So uh, once we do that, we'll figure it out, but I'll take the exhaust off, drop the cab on, and then go from there. Here we go. That was just a rough line for when we rolled the beads. I cut inside a little bit, because we can always cut more off after. The biggest hump will be making the mounts and having it bolt down but once that cab is bolted down i don't think it has to come off again Oof, look at that it's just itching to go underneath here so we gonna go way lower way lower you start cutting and then start sliding it ahead um, I moved the engine ahead an inch and a quarter and I cut about an inch and a quarter off of the firewall so in theory we should be able to slide ahead at least two and a half inches from original which gives me a little bit more room here and I might even have room for a condenser for some air conditioning huh and yeah, we'll worry about that a long time away from now but man that is huge Huge, huge, huge. I grabbed the snips, keep cutting, because I remember that the transmission was right up through the floor there. I could, I could pat it and touch it. So, um, oh, so exciting. Here we go. All right, cabs on. That's roughly where the cabs gotta go. Nice and centered in my wheels. Looks a little off on the camera, but again, because the angle's bigger at the back. So, um, I got enough space on the front here yet. We got cooling fans, we got everything kind of nicely in par. We got some inline air filters and we got some trumpets. Let's pull in some nice air, which will work nicely. It'll come down through there, down, and then right out this headlight right here. Oh, it's gonna be awesome. Basically, from the edge, I made a line there to the edge there is 27. And that is 26 and a half. So uh, basically going to take it right under the top here and cut it in and we're going to take this front clip off again so lift up on it weld the wheelbarrow in then we'll bolt the clip in properly all the way along on the bottom of the front from there we will determine how the cab is going to sit because we might have to tweak it a hair looks like it's pretty low on the on the radiator there and i don't know until i bolt it in properly it might have to sit kind of more like that <laughs> You never know until all the bolts are in, but we're gonna weld the wheelbarrow in and then go from there. Here we go.
pretty exciting. I've been waiting for this for seven months. I think it's in two different orders, so I need four packages, but I bet I'm getting one. Just one? That's it. <laughs> yeah, because I need three big ones. Uh, I don't have them. <laughs> Alright, I'll be back tomorrow then, I guess. I know. This is. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Okay, man. Have a good one. Thanks. Yeah, you too. It's not thick enough for the. Yeah, I think it might. Maybe this. <laughs> That's not a good indication of what's coming for the rest of the seats. Ooh, that is nice. Man, that is cool. Oh, perfect. Okay, so after some phone calls with FedEx, uh, there is another shipment. Um, it is coming, I don't know exactly when. I'm hoping by the next video it'll be here so that uh, we can do the install of the interior. With the seats in place and everything with the seats, I can make sure that the transmission tunnel's not too high, getting in the way of like the seat bracket or anything stupid like that. In the meantime, I got a little bit more work to do. I have to cut this bracket off the old firewall and weld it in place. That gives all the mounts for the uh, steering at least, maybe. See, I need to get this truck safety too, and I need them to think that most of this stuff is original, otherwise they're gonna start questioning. Uh, did you do a lot of this work, Rich, or is this a stock truck that we could just, 1964 truck that we can safety? Anyway, I need the brackets for the uh, I did it steering wheel, so I at least need to mount this thing back up again, but then shorten it. And then these are the supports for the fenders, but they need to go back as well. And then we'll have to make a spacer to keep the fenders proper. After we weld this in place, get the fenders on, then we can make our cab mounts and bolt our cab down. From there, we can bolt our box on properly. Um, still need to do the drive shaft and a whole bunch of other small things. But before you know it, we'll be driving this down the road. I'm super stoked about this truck. Remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich, so get out there, work on your stuff. I'll race you. Send some pictures of your rides and where you're at, and we'll see who uh, is gonna get done first. Kevin and I have a bet on this one. If I can drive this truck in his driveway before that three-wheel interrogator makes it off the driveway, he's gonna buy me a case of beer, so here we go.